Hi everyone, welcome to another My English School stream, a webinar. Um, my name is Aaron. And my name is Alex. Yes. Um, welcome to the stream. Yeah, welcome to the stream. We just had a wonderful stream all about choosing a holiday. Now we're going to be talking about describing your city. Very good. Let's start with where are you from, Alex? Yeah, where am I from? So um, we've got a little map of the UK and Ireland here. And I'm from the south west of England. Down here. It's not very famous for um, being big. Like we don't have big cities. And um, the biggest cities we have are Plymouth, famous from the Spanish Armada, and also um, where our navy is based, and Exeter, which is the capital of um, our county, which is called Devon. Devon is, is a beautiful place. If you want to go to a place full of nature in England, go there. It, it's really, really beautiful. If you like surfing as well, the north of the county has fantastic surfing. Interesting surfing. I've never thought of England as a place to go surfing. We've got really good surfing. Um, ah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a thing. Like um, at school, there were people who surfed and people who didn't. It, <laughs> I didn't surf at all. I come from this very small village you can see called King's Curswell. Wow, that's very, very small. Very small. I think we only have 2,000 or 3,000 inhabitants. Very, very small, insignificant. We're about like two hours from Bristol mm -hmm. and five hours from London, more or less. And Aaron, where are you from? Yes, I'm from Ireland, and in particular, I'm from the southwest of Ireland, from County Cork. Uh, Cork is the second biggest city in the Republic of Ireland, uh, um, oh. and West Cork is the biggest county in Ireland. A oh. county is basically the equivalent of an Italian province, mm -hmm. or, well, I'd say province of a region, mm -hmm. uh, because they're so small. <laughs> and in particular, I'm from this town here called Bandon in County oh, Cork, nice. about 20 minutes from the sea. Wow. Um, there's some really nice beaches down here, like Ham Strand or well, uh, Kilbritton as well. Is it Kilbritton? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's with one L. <laughs> Is it very windy? Um, yes, it can be. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, there are some very nice towns in the area, uh, a lot of countryside. Um, Clonakilty is quite famous in Ireland in general because of the excellent sausages and bacon rashers that they Sausages make. and bacon? Yes. Sign me the, up. The <laughs> best, Let's go. <laughs> yes, the best sausages in Ireland are Clonakilty sausages. So if wow. you ever go there, I recommend Clonakilty sausages. They are absolutely the best. Everybody knows this. And um, I'll yeah. watch out for that. Then. It's only about half an hour uh, drive from Cork, which is a wonderful city as well. Um, I want to go with this summer now. now. Yes. This summer. Let's go to <laughs> right Ireland, now. guys. Let's go to Ireland. Yes. Uh, the problem is that the streets are very small, so you need um, a small car okay. to move around. Definitely. I used to it. Down where I'm from, we've got a lot of country roads. So I grew up and um, grew up, phrase <laughs> Um, and was raised in um, the country. So I passed my driving test in country roads and I'm very used to driving very fast, <laughs> probably a little too fast down some country lanes. Of course, when there's no one there. When there's no one there, yeah. but there's, there's always a cow. <laughs> there's always a cow, there's always a tractor. Yeah, exactly. Always... Tractors are the worst. <laughs> a lot of people think of Ireland and they think of sheep. So the classic <laughs> example of the country, Irish countryside is uh, a field full of sheep. But in my area, in the south of Ireland, there are a lot of cows. Um, all of the fields are full of cows. There's just cows everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, lots are of they cows. black and white cows? Black and white cows. Yeah. Classics. Black and white Classics. Cows. Lots of milk. Um, <laughs> shall we move on to the? Yeah, definitely. Uh, other screen. 
So, uh, welcome to the stream again. Um, We've and got this Aaron is our, and Alex here. And, and this is our focus. We're describing your city. Yes, exactly. Which is going to be great. Um, so, we both live in Bologna. Yes. At this moment in time. Oh, we, we have a comment here from Katerina. She, she follows hey, us Katerina the again. stream. Welcome. Um, she comes from Livorno. It's near the sea and it's uh, 20, 30 minutes from Pisa. Fantastic. Have you ever visited Pisa, Alex? I have visited Pisa. Um, again, lots of tourists. <laughs> lots of tourists. Lots of pe yes. people want to go to see the Tower of Pisa, of course. And it's, I spent a good um, 10, 15 minutes taking pictures of tourists doing, um, doing this with the Tower of Pisa. Marco Tower. <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny very very funny there are a lot of them definitely yeah um yeah i think i I've, I've only passed by livorno once because i took the ferry from Ooh. near livorno uh, to Isola Delba, maybe oh beautiful something like that I something like that an <laughs> island <laughs> an island somewhere <laughs> an island somewhere yes beautiful um here in bologna Let's see what our focus says, because we'll have yeah. some questions. In exactly, focus, we have exactly. describing what there is in a city, describing what cities are like, and superlatives. What is this, describing what cities are like? What does this mean? Yeah, so like is very flexible in the English language. You need to pay attention to if the question or, yeah, just the question has the verb to be as the auxiliary, or the verb to do as the auxiliary. If we have the verb um, to do, so do you like pizza? It means if you appreciate, if you like pizza. So do you like pizza? I love pizza. So this is expressing a preference. Aaron loves pizza. <laughs> Everyone loves pizza. <laughs> if we have the verb to be, so you can see what is your city, is your city like, so verb to be, we're describing the city. So um, if it's big, small, um, old, Italian, modern, different adjectives. So not do you like your city? Yes, I like my city. What is your city like? My city is big. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Um, so yes, pay attention if like is a verb or not. Exactly. Um, okay, let's have some questions. We have, uh, do you live in the city or in the country? What are some advantages of living in a city? What are some disadvantages of living in a city? What is your city famous for? I'm going to leave this question here in the comments. Tell us what your city is famous for. Uh, mm. What about you, uh, <laughs> Alex? Um, do you live in the city or in the country? I live in the country, in the middle of the country. Um, like we were saying before, um, my village is surrounded by cows, sheep, horses, and tractors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're famous. We, my city, my town, my village, village, <laughs> um, is famous for nothing really. It's very old. So there's a church in the middle of the um, of the village, which is at least a thousand years old. Wow. Um, but no, it's not very famous. We have Torquay, which is a town that's close, which is famous for being the birthplace of Agatha Christie, the famous author. Fantastic. Exactly. So her house is there. If you want to visit, you can visit her house. Um, and we have a little statue, a little bust of Agatha Christie in the city centre. Nice. I didn't know that Agatha Christie was from the southwest. Yeah, no, she's... Um, a little country girl herself. Okay, nice. I suppose it makes sense. A lot of her novels are yeah. set in these small English towns. And... Yeah, so if you like um, Jane Austen types of books as well, all of the Pride and Prejudice um, story, all of the different stories that she wrote are typically based in the Southwest, but especially Devon. 
So if you imagine big manor houses in the countryside um, with people drinking tea, um, with parasols, umbrellas, um, that's where I'm from. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's what we're um, from. How about you? What's, what's Cork famous? Well, um, my, I, I live in the countryside. Um, Bandon is a, uh, it's a small town, really, in West Cork. It's not famous for anything in particular, but nearby, as <laughs> similar to Alex, there are two towns. Uh, one, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it is the birthplace of, uh, well, it's where Henry Ford, where his family was from. Ooh. So Henry Ford is obviously wow. an American businessman, but his family is from Ireland and they're from West Cork. Um, and uh, there is another town nearby uh, where a very famous um, hero of the uh, Irish uh, uh, independence war uh, died um, during yeah. the Civil War. And Michael Collins was a famous, um, well, uh, he was a general, but also a politician, and he was assassinated near Bandon. Uh, oh, wow. So, Famous also for this, <laughs> unfortunately. You've got a few famous things. Yes. Uh, Cork itself is um, has some very important monuments. It has the Shandon Bells that are, it's a big cathedral where um, the, well, apart from the fact that you can go to the top of the tower and you can see all of the city. And also you can ring the bells of Ooh. the cathedral. So oh, wow, wow. it must be very bad to live near this uh, this church because yeah. tourists go in all day and start ringing oh, God. the bells uh so it must be Ooh. very annoying very very annoying uh we also have the english market which is uh, huh. uh it's a, an indoor market uh it's very nice it's got lots of typical food and restaurants bars and we also have an, yeah. a very interesting museum Ooh. which is um all based on the history of butter. Um, <laughs> no as way. we said, there are a lot of cows in my area. The so history there's a lot of, of butter. And so there's a lot of butter. How they made it in the past, how they make it now. There's um, this big museum dedicated solely to butter. So okay. I've never visited it because I find it very boring, but still it's there. <laughs> if you visit Cork, I'd recommend a visit to the Butter Museum. Is um, butter in Ireland salty or Plants, like normal butter, like here in Italy. Well, it, it depends what type of butter you buy. <laughs> We've got an expert here. <laughs> we have so, an expert. So um, usually <laughs> butter, in the, if, if you're buying it for breakfast, it's not uh, salty. It's okay. quite sweet, actually. Oh, and nice. It's, um, uh, it's very soft. Okay. Very, very soft, uh, very soft, which is great if you're having... Uh, you know, bread and butter or uh, butter and jam or, or whatever. Um, and then obviously you get the harder stuff, which is more for cooking, which is similar uh, to the Italian uh, butter. That's, okay. Yeah. The most common is the spreadable. Um, it has very light, creamy taste. It's excellent. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. And um, yeah, is there any particular typical food from your hometown? Yep. So we have... Um, English tea is very, very famous from our place specifically. Um, again, because of Jane Austen and all of these things. But um, we also have fish and chips. It is famous in all of England and all of the UK, to be honest. But our fish and chips is particularly good. We also have um, something that is called Cornish pasties or just pasties. Pasties. Essentially, it's um, almost like a calzone, almost, or a piadina, but instead of um, a pizza inside or instead of um, some meat, we have beef, so minced beef, um, carrots, potatoes, and different vegetables inside. Um, originally, it was made for workers who had to go into the mines underground. Wow. And they needed a food that they could just take with one hand and eat. So 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's we a very interesting history. It's very cool. Um, I'll and bring in so, some Cornish facts because I made them recently. And um, they're really so, good. are there a lot of abandoned mines in your area? Yes, um, we have a lot of abandoned mines. We were famous for, I think, copper mining, as well as just standard coal. So, coal. what is a mine? Let's just explain it for uh, okay. our viewers. So, a mine is a big hole in the ground where people go inside and they they mine like this yes. <laughs> to remove rocks that can be used um, for metal for coal um, for trains for different things like that mining mining exactly, exactly. we have some uh replies have here yeah, we yeah. have um oh. Uh, what do we have? Yes, we have uh, Anna Maria, who tells us that her village is famous for its ancient church of the 11th century. Wow. It's very old, very is old. Is that from Fort Lee? It could I be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we had you know, N Nancy, I think, says that she lives in a town and that living in a city is easier when you need to take public transport. Very true. Definitely. Very true. In the so, countryside, there's... Basically, no. nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um, yeah, let's talk about advantages of living in the in the city. Because currently, we live in a city. We live in Bologna. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I think definitely public transport is a big advantage of living in the city. All services in general, supermarkets, uh, banks, uh, chemists. You have everything really close by. You don't need to move around a lot. There's a lot of people you can meet. Um, but Nancy says, yeah, we have disadvantages as well. So like Nancy says, um, living in a city is difficult because it is more chaotic than a city, than a village, maybe. Um, Bergamo is famous for the upper town. Ah, so you're from Bergamo. Ah, yes, Bergamo is a lovely city. I visited uh, Especially a few Bergamo years city. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, living in a city, unfortunately, does have its disadvantages. Um, it's a little noisier, maybe more polluted. Yes, it's more chaotic sometimes. Um, I like Bologna for this reason because it's not a big city. It's a very livable city. You can cycle around, you can walk from one side of the city to the other in an hour walking, 10, 15 minutes by bike. Mm -hmm. Everything's very connected. Um, we don't have big problems with tourism for now. For now, <laughs> but the tourism is definitely increasing. Oh, we have a comment from Federica. Hi, um, hi Federica. In her city, where she was born, it's, it's famous for Turonen for violin. I know this one. This is Cremona. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> I lived near Cremona for a long time. Ah. Uh, Benash lives in Brescia, and Brescia is famous for a lot of things. Yes, Brescia yeah. is also a very nice town. Nice. Uh, there's a castle. I, I remember a very big. Beautiful castle in the hills where you can see all of the city. I seem to remember. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Castles here are beautiful as well. Definitely, yes. Um, really back in Ireland, there are a lot of old uh, castles. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not usually kept very well. They're usually ruined or ruins or um, um, they're either ruins or they are private, so you can't actually visit them. Exactly. Now that I think of it, near my town on the sea. Uh -huh. um, there is a Ooh. castle which is private property and it's Ooh. owned by the Disney family. The Disney the family? Disney family, yes. They have a castle <laughs> no near, 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 near Harbour <laughs> Um But yeah, uh, and there's a lot of uh, old monasteries. The Disney family. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> there's a lot of old monasteries as well that are usually run down. So. Yeah, the situation is similar in England as well. We have a lot of castles. Um, some of them are protected by the National Trust, so they are maintained and accessible to tourists. But a lot of them are private, and there are a few that are just abandoned, especially in some of the more remote parts of the country. Um, but still. Okay. Yeah, so maybe we can move on to the next slide now. Definitely. We have cities of the world. Um, mm. We have a few different cities here. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, choose whatever city you want. It can be your city, 
maybe also another city that you've been on holiday to, mm -hmm. anywhere. Yes, and tell us what is the excellence of this city, because the focus here is uh, on uh, superlatives. Yeah. Um, how do we make a superlative, Alex? So, um, in the previous stream, we talked a little about comparatives. Um, comparatives are adjectives that are used to change things, right? To compare. Um, we have two types of adjectives. Two. We have um, short adjectives, such as big, which are made of one or two syllables. So big, if you say big, it's just one, big. It's not big, it's big. So if we want to change that to a superlative, we just add EST to the end and we include the at the beginning. So the biggest, like you can see in chat now. If you have a long adjective, so maybe something like, yeah, beautiful, um, it is either two or more syllables. So beautiful, if you say it, beautiful is three syllables. For long adjectives, we have most before and the article as well. So the most beautiful. Exactly. Excellent. So these are superlatives and we use them not when we are comparing two things, but when we're talking about the best, the top of a category. Yeah. Hey. Uh, we've got some comments here. Let's Fantastic see. comments. Hi, Chiara. Hi. Uh, welcome back, Katerina. Hi, Federica. So Chiara was saying uh, uh, that come from she's from San, San Giorgio. Giorgio, a city in the province of Naples, uh, mm. but her birthplace is a small country, small town, I would say, located in a very small region called Molise. Yes. <laughs> Does it exist? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm joking. Joke. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I think it's between Abruzzo and Puglia. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, Careful with country. Country in um, English is used for all of the countries. So Italy is a country. Um, what you're talking about is either a village or a town. So if you have a small area where people live, it's a village or town. Towns are traditionally a little bit more industrial and villages are traditionally a little bit more for sleeping having a family and living, not for working, Definitely. usually. Uh, but but very, very good comment. Very good comment and very good use of birthplace. Well. Yes, fantastic use of birthplace. Katerina says, I live in a small city. It is more comfortable because I need to uh, drive and I'm going to do or going to the supermarket or the cinema. Uh, she can go on foot. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Comfortable or convenient? I would say convenient. Convenient. Yes, so. Comfortable is more when um, we want to relax. So if you have a nice bed at home, your bed is more comfortable than, I don't know, the bus, for sure. Oh, definitely, yes, or Ryanair flight seats. <laughs> yeah, um, convenient means that it's easy for you. So for example, going to a supermarket is more convenient then going to lots of individual shops. Um, you go to one supermarket, you buy everything there. It's very convenient. Um, Excellent. Um, then we have uh, Chiara yeah, telling Chiara us about again. San Giorgio. It's famous for Salvo's Pizzeria. Fantastic. <laughs> what is Salvo's Pizzeria? I imagine a famous pizzeria. It's near uh, Naples. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I imagine it must have very good pizza. Is it the original pizzeria? The one, <laughs> the one, the original. Um, <laughs> and she also says that what she doesn't like about her city is that there is that is massive and chaotic. Yeah. So there's not a lot of green areas and transport doesn't work well. Uh, that's the trade off um, we say in English. So a trade off is when you have um, lots of positive things. But negative things as well. So you want your positive things, but it, 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 yeah, there's a consequence. It's not free. There's no paradise. Um, you have a lot of things. You have, for example, Salvo's Pizzeria, which is fantastic, but the transport doesn't work. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's a balance, right? 
And Federica says that uh, there is a beautiful castle. I think this is in Bergamo, right? This, no, in uh, oh, Brescia. Brescia. Oh, okay. Yes. And a lot of Roman antiquities. Uh, the castle in Brescia is a public place. Ah, yes. Oh, beautiful. Uh, not beautiful. private. So you can visit whenever you want. Excellent. Fantastic. And um, Antonella says, hello, my city where I was born was Potenza, the capital of Basilicata, another very small region. Um, it is uh, covered, uh, considered. considered a vertical city for its oh. urban structure, and the center is placed higher than, I would say, the rest of the city. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, yeah, the rest of the city. Yeah. Very nice. I've I never visited Potenza. I've before. never visited Potenza either. I didn't even know it was the capital of Basilicata. <laughs> we need to improve I need, we, we need to go to the south of Italy. <laughs> we do, we do, definitely. <laughs> we definitely need to go. Um, Small town. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Perfect, Chiara. Very good. Um, Garino says the uh, most interesting, uh, the easiest, Fantastic. the worst, the best, the farthest, and uh, the least are all superlatives. Very good. Yes, very Garino good. uses a lot of irregulars as well. And yes. The, comparative, the superlative of bad is the worst. Yep. And the good, good is the best, and even further or far, far, sorry, is the fathers. Very good. So, if we look at all of the different cities that we have, of these cities, which do you think is the biggest? The biggest, yeah, I would say New York, but then Rio de Janeiro should be very big as well, shouldn't it? Oh, I know. I know that the biggest city in the world, I think, is Tokyo. Right? Is it Tokyo? I think it is Tokyo, yes, by a large margin as well. <laughs> Usually when we talk about um, a city and big, we're not talking about the physical area. We're talking about the population. Mm -hmm. yes. Of course, if you have a big population, then the city is probably going to be very big as well. But... For example, Tokyo is very big physically, but also is very concentrated. So a lot of people in Tokyo. So imagine this is also a very vertical city. Very well. vertical as well. Lots of skyscrapers. skyscrapers. Th yeah, it's probably the work. biggest. Moscow yes. is also very big, isn't it? I don't know how many millions. Um, I seem to I, I read uh, a while ago about Tokyo and it has something like 38 million. Oh my people. god! That's insane. Wow! Um, wow! Yes. Yeah, so lots of skyscrapers. Yeah, lots of skyscrapers. Yes. These um, very tall buildings. When yeah. do we have skyscrapers in Italy? Oh, good question. Let's let our viewers uh, answer. Do you have a skyscraper in your city or in your town? Do we have a skyscraper in Bologna? I think we do. We have one. We have one. <laughs> it's a beautiful tower. Which right? is loved. Which everybody hates. <laughs> um, yes, it's for banks and insurance. Exactly, yeah. banks and insurance. And you can see it from the motorway. Yeah. yeah. But usually on the skyline of Bologna, you see San Luca, which is... Uh, exactly. You know you're back in Bologna when you see San Luca. Exactly. Um, it's lovely. And... Yeah, then we have uh, warm. Ooh, of these cities here, which do you think is the warmest? Not Toronto. Definitely not Toronto. <laughs> no, I imagine it, in the winter it gets very, very cold. It should be Rio, right? Should probably be Rio, I'd say, is the uh, warmest. Which is the biggest city in Europe, do you know? Yeah, that's London. Possibly London. I know Maybe London has. I think London Ed is a little bit bigger than it because I think it has eight million people. I think eight or ten. I seem to London is a confusing city. We have like the center of London, so London, London, but then we have Greater London as well, which um, expands out of London. Tokyo is the most modern than Rio. Careful, Nancy. You want a comparative. So we would compare the two with Tokyo is more yeah. modern than Rio. In this case, you're using a comparative because you're using two different uh, cities. What we're using are superlatives because we have the top of a category. Exactly. Um, for example, London is the biggest city in, Europe, in all of Europe. Exactly. It's number one. So um, we don't compare. We say that this is the, the best, the biggest, the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hi, Claudia. Hello, Claudia. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, yes, Tokyo is the most populated city. Yes, populated. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Katarina. Katarina. <laughs> Thank you. Um, excellent. And then, uh, yes, it's in, it's 
incredible because uh, in Ireland there are only about four and a half million people. Oh my god! So <laughs> you can fit all of the people in Ireland in uh, London. Oh twice. my lord! So yeah, that's crazy. Very very that's big. That's crazy. <laughs> this is telling you how big London is. But um, if Tokyo is thirty-eight million, then you can fit two or three. Basically Londons. ten. Ten of Ireland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just in Tokyo. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That or is even ridiculous. Two or three London. Yeah, yeah, Tokyo, yeah. Which is incredible. And that's mind blowing. Yeah. How um, about um, the most expensive city? Ooh, very difficult. I don't know which is the most expensive city in uh, Italy. What yeah. do you think? Tell us in the comments. Um, in the world, maybe Paris. Paris is very expensive, I know that. I think it also depends on what you uh, consider. Maybe some places are more expensive for food, some places are more expensive for transport, some places for are rent. Expensive for rent. Mm -hmm. Dublin is very expensive yeah. for rent. Yes, for mm -hmm. rent it's very expensive. But I imagine uh, London as well is very expensive. London is very expensive for rent. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm trying to think in the world. Where's a super exclusive place? Maybe maybe Singapore or something? Singapore or maybe um, some like Dubai. Maybe Dubai, yes, definitely. Um, Claudio okay. says that he thinks that Milan is the most expensive city in Italy. I Felica think I would agree. agrees for rent, for apartment rent, yes. <laughs> it's Milan, yeah. Milan, yes, yeah, yeah, very yeah, expensive. Yeah. I, I imagine some areas of the city are very exclusive as well. Definitely. Dublin is the most, most expensive <laughs> city. Dublin is She's very talking expensive. from experience. <laughs> Dublin is very expensive uh, in general. Rents are very high and uh, prices for food, and, well, transport as well is very high. I don't know if it compares to London though, I'm not sure. London, is, I, I was talking to some students recently that have friends that work as a waiter or as a barman in London and they visited and they said that basically all of the money that they get from their job mm. is immediately used for rent. Mm. So they have very little money. Um, it's difficult. <laughs> it's not easy at all. <laughs> Hi, Kendra. Hi, Kendra. <laughs> Hi, Kendra. Okay, excellent. Shall we move on? Yeah, yeah, we definitely can. Transportation in your city. <laughs> so I think we... We touched upon it earlier with, um, I think, trade-offs, right? Yes, definitely. As expensive as. Oh, let's see, Dublin is... Expensive. London is, uh, is not as expensive as Dublin. Dublin is more expensive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. We are, well, Dublin is very expensive. And Nancy's saying that New York is the most fun city. Excellent. Very good use very good. Um, of fun. Fun is an irregular because we usually use it like a long adjective even yeah. though it is incredibly short yeah sometimes it's the sound that changes so if i said the funnest again possible but it, it doesn't sound amazing so we would usually say the most fun and then maria says that in her opinion rio de janeiro is the one of the most dangerous cities in the world it could definitely be um i think so um i think one of the most dangerous is probably caracas as well in south america is that in colombia no it's in venezuela venezuela um, yeah and claudio says that the cheapest city well i would say the cheapest country in the world is vietnam um, yeah yes vietnam is a country not a city uh, what is the capital of vietnam it's not Pyongyang. No, no. <laughs> we need to review our geography. No, it's um, Saigon, isn't it? Maybe, maybe it's Saigon. Or I'm, I'm going through all of the Vietnam War movies. Possibly Saigon. Is it Saigon? Well, let's say Saigon then is the cheapest in the in, world. In City, of course. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So let's talk about... Oh, fun is irregular and funny regular. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, the funniest, exactly, and the most exactly, fun. Perfect. exactly, perfect, Kathleen. Well done. Very um, good job. Katarina. You get to you get some claps. <laughs> um, let's talk about transportation. Um, uh, what is the easiest way to get around in your city? Let's mm. ask them as well. Here in Bologna, um, the buses are quite good. They definitely connect the city, but they are quite often late. So, in my opinion, the best way to travel around Bologna is by bike. 
we can get everywhere in the city in 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Excellent, yes. Um, I often uh, catch the bus, um, especially if I need to move, say, from one side of the city to the other. Um, there are a lot of buses in Bologna, so it's, it's very, um, they're quite convenient. Convenient, <laughs> convenient yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, Anna Maria, the most fun is correct. Yes, the most fun is correct. The most yes, fun exactly. is fun. It's fun. Um, but for funny, which is a different adjective, we use the funniest. Exactly. Um, um, so yeah, the buses are... are quite good, but sometimes late. Yes, sometimes, sometimes late, late unfortunately. unfortunately. Bikes are great. You also have an electric Yeah, so scooter. I have an electric scooter. Careful, when we talk about scooter in English, it's a bit confusing. Scooter can be the, the normal, like a motorbike, right? Um, but it can also be the thing that typically children use. Mm -hmm. Like with two wheels. They have it and they, they push with their feet. Um, and I have an electric scooter. It's probably the most dangerous um, <laughs> type of transport to use in a city because. Um, uh, a lot of people don't pay attention um, to where you are in the road, mm -hmm. um, but it's very fast and very convenient. Excellent. We have some very good use of superlatives from Katarina as well. Again, uh, walking is the least expensive and the cheapest uh, transportation or means of transport. Very Fantastic. Good. Really and good. And Nancy says that in her town, there is a bus, coach, tram, train, taxi, bike, Bike sharing oh, as well. There's every type of sharing now. Nice bike sharing as well. Bike sharing. We have a similar system here. Yeah, we have no bike. Well. I know that in some cities around Italy, you have electric scooters. Yes. Being shared. I think Milan. Recently, I went to uh, teach in the Rimini, my English school, and oh, yeah, they also yeah. have uh, a lot of electric scooters in Rimini. How was the experience? Like, are there a lot of people who are being dangerous on electric scooters? No, not at all. No? Uh, not many people use them. I okay. think it's because uh, the, the, the city is quite small, so most of the time you can walk. But sometimes I used it because I needed to move from one side of the city to the other because uh, my, uh, well, anyway, where I was staying was a little bit far from the school. But um, how, yeah. how was it? Did you like it? Yes, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of fun. fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's like snowboarding on, on paper. And Anna Maria tells us that in her city, the easiest, cheapest, and most ecological means of transport is on foot. Excellent. Exactly. In general, I think is the <laughs> exactly. best way to move around if you don't <laughs> want to spend and you don't want to uh, pollute. The biggest problem is, of course, in the summer when it's very hot, um, walking on, like walking around the city is not easy. You start sweating because you're very hot. You start, you know, you need to drink, I don't know how many liters of water, but a lot of water. Um, and luckily here in Bologna, we have um, the porticos here, so some arcades which protect us from the sun, but it's still very hot. And what about your town back in uh, England? What is the best means of transport there? <laughs> on foot, on foot. Um, so we do have bus services, but the bus services are usually for connecting different towns, not for traveling in the town. It's, it's very, very small. So just walking around is, is easy. We walk to school, we walk to the supermarket, we walk to the park, walking everywhere. Excellent. And um, let's talk about the um, the easiest, or sorry, the most expensive or the cheapest way of moving around the city. Um, mm. In my town, from where I'm from, in Bandon, the most expensive is probably the bus. Unfortunately, the regional buses, um, the buses that connect cities, the coaches, are very, very expensive. Um, the ones connecting big cities like Cork and Dublin or Dublin and Galway are very cheap. Uh, nice. But the local ones, for example, Cork to Bandon, are very expensive. You're, it, it actually costs more to go from Cork to Bandon and Bandon Cork than going Cork to Dublin. Oh my which gosh. is uh, yeah, three hours and one hour instead. Going That's crazy. That's uh, crazy. The cheapest, of course, is on foot. 
but most people use the car to mm. move around. Right. To move around. Right, right, right. What about the most expensive? In England, the most expensive is easily um, the train. Trains in England are not very modern. They're kind of old, and they're very expensive. Very, very expensive. Um, for example, for me to travel to London, which is again five hours away on the on the train, it depends when I book it. But if I book it last minute, it will easily be around two hundred pounds, which is ridiculous, and that's not even return one way. So trains, trains, they're slow and expensive in England. They're mm. terrible. Terrible. Italy has got a very good train system. Yes, I really like using trains when I'm moving around in Italy. Uh, I find it very convenient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're very cheap, especially the regionali. They're not yep. particularly nice, but still, it depends. Some, some of them, some of them, I've okay. noticed going from. Um, I don't know, from Parma to Bologna are mm. very, very modern, yeah. very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even if you book a high speed train in advance, it's not that expensive. Oh, and they're very good trains. They're too. very good trains, very good exactly. Train. It's almost like an aeroplane, a nice yeah. aeroplane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, not like Ryanair. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have some comments as well. So, Nancy also says that the easiest way to get around Bergamo. And the cheapest two is, I imagine, bus. I imagine, the, I think the tram, maybe. I don't know. What is the easiest way? I don't know. Oh, bus. number two. Because yeah, exactly. There was bus and coach. So I imagine coach. I imagine. Uh, or the bus. Um, or the tram, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, Ana Maria says that in her city, the, oh, yes, on Yeah, exactly. And, and Katarina, Katarina says. Riding the bicycle and walking are the easiest transportation. Yes, the yeah, definitely. Means of transport. definitely. Yeah. And the worst time of the day to travel from Nancy <laughs> is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and after 4. Yes. yes. Um, what rush hour. Yes, there we go. We call it rush hour. Like the films. Yes, rush hour. Uh, rush hour is the period of the day where everybody either goes to work or everybody um, takes their children to school. Takes their to school or comes back from work. Uh, it's or a goes disaster. Shopping. I don't know. Um, it's a disaster. Here I would say it's between, I'd say seven, maybe seven, eight. We get a peak around. So if you're out of Bologna, the tangenziale, um, so the ring road around Bologna fills up around five, five thirty, six p.m. p.m. exactly, and then that continues. Until yeah seven seven eight mm -hmm. so it's it's busy but yeah. not like Rome or or Milan so I imagine yes <laughs> and Katrina says that uh, flying to the farthest places is the most expensive transportation yet cruise ship <laughs> a cruise is very very expensive if you want to visit the like Jamaica from Venice on a boat on a ship that is very expensive. Flying is also very expensive, but the cruises are ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, and Maria also says that when there is a lot of traffic, yes, this is the definition of rush hour. Yes. Perfect. Very good definition. Okay. Let's move on to the uh, next part. Yep. We have adjectives here. What is your city like? Like we said before, uh, like in this case is not used as a verb. The verb here is to be. Exactly. Um, so, what is your city like? We're talking about, we want a description, we want adjectives. So, um, on the screen, we have synonyms in two columns. Um, on one side, um, basically, we have a little bit more elegant, uh, different synonyms for the adjectives on the other side. So, if you want, you can match them up. For example, large. What is the synonym for large? Definitely big. Big. Um, definitely big. Definitely big. Um, is there a big difference between large and big? No. Bologna is not a big city. Bologna is not a large city. So They're the same. They're the same. I wouldn't. Uh, of course, big is a very common adjective, something that you can learn at the beginning 
of studying a new language. So when you studied English, you learned big, small, um, large is not, it's a false friend. You have to remember that when we describe this, it is not large. Okay. Large is every dimension. Think of when you go to mm, a clothes shop, you can get different sizes for your clothes. You can get small, medium, large. large. So we're not talking about large, we're talking about large, every dimension, every dimension. This otherwise is just long. Yeah, or wide. Or wide, yeah. Again, depends. Um, Nancy was talking about uh, transport in her uh, town, uh, the cheapest way is uh, by bus. Fantastic. And bus is more expensive than taxi. I think. Okay, it's more expensive. Remember, if oh, we no, have. Wait. I think she's saying that the most expensive is a taxi. Oh, okay, I fantastic. Perfect. Fantastic. I misread that. Good job, Nancy. The, Very the, good. The most expensive in Bologna as well is the taxi. Yes. Yep. We even have a Tesla taxi. There's a Tesla taxi. There's a Tesla taxi. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> expensive, not cheap, ancient. Oh, nice. I think. They're, Maybe. Uh, yeah, they're yes, very fantastic, good. really is good, cheap. really good. Ancient is historical, very well very done. Very nice. Um, Katarina. Very good. Um, yes, yeah, historical. Um, uh, yeah, De Bologna is definitely a... Yeah. Um, ancient, I think, is even historical. It's I definitely. would say ancient is, I don't know. Maybe Rome. Rome is definitely an ancient city. Um, so, for example, in America, there are no ancient cities. No. Zero. Um, but we can talk about historical cities if they are famous for the history of the country. So a historical city in America would be New York. New York is one of the first big metropolitan cities that existed in America, but it's not ancient because how old is it? It's like... 300 years, 400 years. If you are in America, in the continent, and you want an ancient city, then you need to move to South or Central America, Fantastic. where you can find Mayan cities. Or, exactly. Uh, that would be an ancient city. An ancient city. Here in Europe, we have a lot of cities that have, I don't know how old, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Even if you go to other parts, there are 10,000 year old cities um, that can't cannot compete with modern American <laughs> cities. Um, you have Anna Maria saying that Venice is the most expensive city in Italy, excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's probably true. Um, lively, full of activity, very good. Very Cultural, good. Cultural, um, art, theatre and music, very good. Let's, let's match some of these up. Very we have good. touristy, uh, crowded. Yeah, so what is crowded actually? Crowded. Crowded is when we have a lot of people all in the same place. Crowded. Fantastic. Uh, Ooh, chaotic and second. crowded could could chaotic also be synonyms. Crowded, synonyms. yes, could definitely That's be That's not synonyms. bad. So you could say that the center of a city at the weekend is crowded. There are a lot of people, tourists. They um, want to go and see their friends, maybe eat, have an aperitivo, mm -hmm. something like that. Good, and it's yes. crowded. But crowded always refers to people. Exactly. Uh, touristy is usually the city is touristy. So Florence, Venice, uh, Rome are very touristy cities. Mm -hmm. Polluted, we have very dirty. Uh, air and water, this is what you'd call small. Yeah, putting uh, lots of cars, lots of um, uh, just General Just <laughs> general cards, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times you can see it in the buildings, in the monuments, you can see the black uh, deposit. Exactly. Um, chaotic, we have uh, very busy and noisy, yes. Mm -hmm. um, cultural, we could have, yeah, art, theatre, music, etc. Exactly. Bologna is definitely a cultural one. Here we have the loot, very noisy, very good. Um, I, I would definitely connect it to uh, dirty, polluted, uh, because of uh, the connection with. Yeah, we can still talk about dirty. noise pollution. Yes, that's, that's a different possible. type of pollution. Then. But yes, anything that um, is in the air really and damages things. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, expensive, we have not cheap, which is the opposite. Very good. And lively, full of activity. Full of activity, yes. Right. Um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for as well. So thank you for coming to the broadcast. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Well done to all of the students as well in chat. Thank you very, very, very much for participating. Yes, for doing in, for commenting. Uh, thank you very much for watching the stream. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye.